All right, so I just went ahead and assembled this thing quick in the garage, two by six with the four and a half inch blocks. And that's just gonna slip right in here now. Just makes sense assembling this outside of here so you're not fighting a drill past this joist trying to get these screws in. Make sure everything's flush. Some joist hangers on the both ends of this joist now. And uh, then this is ready to go. These things, I don't know if I showed you yesterday. To make it easy to put these on, just squeeze them together a little bit and then it'll grip right around the. And so if you get yourself into a bind where you can't get your swing your hammer into a tight spot, get yourself a punch and you can use that to drive your nails in. Not the uh, best solution, but it'll work. All right, so that blocking's all in. Everything looks good. I'll grab all those deck boards coming down that way pretty good. We got to do the same treatment over here now. To grab this end of the board all right guys i did a few things here off camera i restructured the edge of the deck to better support the picture frame board i also added some framing in the shower area i ended up changing this a little further along in the video you're going to see that shortly that's part of the deal when you're building something from scratch without plans sometimes you see things that aren't going to work and hopefully you catch it early enough so it's an easy change so like i said you're going to see that shortly all right so let's get back to it screws I'm using to put the boards in these things. I think we're lined up pretty good here. I like it. Let's put these, drive them home. First deck board we're going to put into place here is going to be the perimeter one, the picture frame board up against the house. So I cut a mitered return from the existing deck material that fit into here and that'll give us a nice uh, finish for this and transition to this this will just go right in here now so i have to get a measurement from the post to this first joint which is approximately an inch and a half so i'm going to bring my notch in now an inch and a half from this outer edge strike my line there and then we'll cut the notch for the post up to that line same thing back here. Whatever we do here, we have to do here. We want this whole thing to be square when we're done. If you start doing different measurements on your posts, the inside of the box where we're going to put the field boards isn't going to be square, and that's going to cause all sorts of issues later on. You want to oversize these cuts, the notches for the post. If you make this cut too small and try to force this board over this, probably the course of action you're going to take is get a sacrificial piece and a hammer, and you're going to try tapping this thing in here. I guarantee you're going to crack this little piece off here. I've done it in the past, so just oversize this. Like I said, the trimming is going to cover that from the post and everything's going to be okay. Again, straight cut here. We're going to do our two notches. And then we're going to finally finish up with the miter cut on the end. And I'm going to show you why we do that last in a second. That's what, uh, that's what you're looking for. Quick couple cuts, doesn't have to be perfect. Everything's fitting in here real good. You can see we got a nice tight gap here with this board. You can see what I was trying to do. I wanted this joint to line up with that one. That looks good, and this looks good too. You see we have a little bit bigger of a gap on this side because I ended up shaving a little bit of this off to uh, fit it in tighter. That's okay, the trim ring for this uh, PVC sleeve, like I said earlier, will cover that up. The last thing we have to do here is cut our 45 on the end of this board and that's going to come from the edge of this board down here over this way to accommodate our other picture frame board that's going to come up to this. That's going to be on a 45 as well. The reason why I wait till the end to cut that 45 is it makes it a lot easier to pull your measurements for your notch 
for the post without that 45 on there already because you got to imagine when we go do this cut now it's going to come from here through this notch down to here somewhere and if you cut that first it's hard to pull your tape off the edges and line everything up I like doing it with everything square in terms of cutting the notch and then the last thing I do is cut the 45 it just makes it a lot easier and here's a look of what that looks like when the 45 is cut on the edge and you can see what I'm talking about uh, you would never imagine this notch to be that after the 45 is on it and try measuring all this out with this already here it's it makes an easy job a lot more difficult so you do the notch like I said before you cut the 45 because this board that's gonna come in here now is gonna fill in all this got this cut to size thing we have to do here is just line up our edge with our framing okay like that check over here I got a good reveal to the other board and same thing like we did before we're gonna make our marks for our posts so I'm gonna come off the post just a hair give us a little breathing room to work all right so after cutting the notches in for the posts and putting the 45s on this is what you end up with did the same type of treatment on this one so notched out both these posts put our 45 on the end this one I'm running straight in I decided not to 45 this in because we got two different types of decking and also that one over there just 90s and dead ends right into the existing deck so I did the same thing over here took the old skirt board that used to go on the side of the deck here to fit in here and I put that in that way we have all the same decking on the existing deck the main deck so I went ahead and put screws in the corners to hold everything in place okay so we got some over there over here down here and over here too so that locks the perimeter in place and I can put all the field screws into place now on these to hold them in it fits and uh, that should be it finally for our framing all right guys so that's all finished it's rock solid now I was able to pound some more nails in there with my punch and I put some screws in as well Let's see if this goes in <laughs> I like it the way I've been spacing these out, what I did on my framing square, if you could see, I put um, put little marks exactly where I want these screws to match up. You can't really see here with the existing deck framing. It'll help you out so you're not pulling a tape and measurements for every single thing you're doing. Right. Once you get that, all it's a matter of doing is squaring up the square. <laughs> Does that make any sense? All it's a matter of doing is lighting up the square with your joist and just putting a little pencil mark exactly where you want your screws. Now this is a little extra work, but it is attention to detail like this that will make your finished product look like a pro did it. So, all right, so we got a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna make a, a spacer when we move on to the inside of this thing here, but this is kind of by eye to get things to line up with the existing deck. Once I get started, oh, I remember we got the one screwing over here. You could bend these a little bit and get them where you need them. Okay, don't overdrive them. You just want them recessed slightly below the deck board. That's all you need. Okay, so for our next step here, we're just gonna fill in all the boards in the middle. So we have to get a measurement. If it was tight, it would be 31, like a hair under. It's like 30 and 15 sixteenths. So you don't want this tight. We want to allow for drainage on either end because, again, we're building a shower. And uh, i got to allow the extra water from the shower head to drain off. So I don't want it running over the edge of the deck over here. 
if it gets to here, I want it to fall into the crack between these two boards. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit, give it a little extra space. Yeah, I'm 31 and an eighth, so it runs off like a quarter of an inch from either end. You're never going to get this 100% perfect when you're dealing with PT wood and doing framing because nothing is, nothing is consistent. All right, so this is 30 and 13 sixteenths in terms of the length. I think we're going to stick with that. It's, um, you know, not too much of a gap where it looks like we made a mistake, but just enough to allow water to drain through. So you want to keep checking your, your measurement for your length going across. You don't want to just trust they're all going to be 13 sixteenths, the 30 and 13 sixteenths. Might have to adjust that as we go. For this next board, I think we're going to keep it that length. The next one down the line here, see now I'm actually around real close to 31, so I might add a 16th on, so we might make the 7 eighths. So here's the next two boards. One, so that's the same length as that one, uh, 30 and 13 16 so This one I made a hair bigger. This one is a little bit closer to 7 eighths. Found this piece of aluminum out in the garage. I'm thinking this might be uh, exactly what we want. All deck boards cut to length and this is what we have everything is you know, dry fitted in here right now no screws got our spacing all correct with our aluminum strips so we knew this was going to happen I didn't mention this yet but we're eventually going to get to a point where we have a little sliver left and there's really nothing you could do about this whenever you're building a deck you're probably going to end up with this at some point and usually if you're building a large deck like this one over here, you just lay all your deck boards in and then you just fit that sliver in either up, usually against the house. Usually you lay a deck from the outside in as long as you frame everything square so the strip ends up against the house. When you're dealing with a smaller deck like this, really the best way to do it instead of just filling that piece in is you, you split the difference on both ends. Now, if we were to just to divide this little area by two and then you know have a little space here and a little space there look how small our deck board would end up being so you can imagine this thing divided by two maybe like seven eighths way too small for a deck board that would look really stupid if we were to do it that way a better way of doing this is we come down here and we cut a lot more off this first board and then what that does is it jogs the whole thing down a little bit and it opens up the space essentially cut the same amount off this last board over here that we cut off this one so we've got to do some measuring and figure out what we need for that but that's the proper way of doing this so in essence you're adding another deck board into the equation good thing to look for too is see if you have any damage on the edges of your board hopefully you don't but if you do that'll be the side that you want to cut off this all looks good, so I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and slice this guy down. This one goes down here. Now you want to put your cut edge up against your picture frame. Right, that fits in there good. And same thing on this side. Let's see. And that looks perfect. That's it guys. That's how you size your deck boards and make everything look symmetrical when you're done. That's what you're looking for. All the gaps looking uh, the same. Same with boards on either end. All right, guys, with everything cut, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get all these boards screwed in.
that's pretty much it for the uh, the decking on this. And also wrap up this video and this segment of the deck build for the outdoor shower. Got any questions or comments? You saw something I did wrong? Put it down below. If you have a question about something, put that down below as well. I'll try to answer everything. If you liked the video, hammer that like button and check the description for links to all the products they used in today's video. Uh, yeah, everything's looking really good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.